in the expansionist era is over for Taiwan's $1.1 trillion life insurance industry after the steepest Federal Reserve interest hikes in 40 years pushed it to the brink of the liquidity crisis. Over the past year, local regulators have repeatedly loosened operating rules after a cocktail of unrealized investment losses, falling income, and increased payouts saw companies struggle to meet required financial standards. The combination of a concerted push to shore up capital buffers and the introduction of new rules allowing companies to reclassify assets means analysts now believe the worst of the crisis is over. However, there are still concerns over some operators and even the biggest players face years of crimped profitability and far slower asset growth. The sector's combined pre-tax profits were down 76 percent in the first half of 2023 compared to the previous year. In May, the central bank sounded a rare alarm Wanting the stresses meant Taiwan's financial system was not 100% stable. And getting back on track will mean painful changes. The sector has already embarked on a substantial capital raise and is under pressure from the financial services regulator to fundamentally overhaul its product mix. Now, the industry's assets have increased more than twofold since 2009 to $1.1 trillion, about equivalent to the GDP of the Netherlands after an aggressive expansion strategy focused on financial instruments beyond classic insurance. Key among these were long-run savings products that offered a higher return than Taiwanese dollar bank deposits. Uh, with no local bond market of sufficient size to absorb this money, it piled into overseas assets. Approximately 60% of its holdings are in U.S. dollar-denominated bonds, mostly long-dated credit, necessitating a huge hedging operation. Uh, this left the industry exposed when the U.S. started raising rates, sending the values um, of, uh, of, of such holdings plummeting and the cost of hedging rising, unlike Silicon Valley Bank, which has collapsed uh, after being forced to liquidate similar holdings at a loss. The lifers don't have to refund redeemed policies immediately, giving them time to work out a strategy. Uh, uh, still, they were sitting on huge paper losses and what simultaneously. As consumers sought higher yielding investments, annual premiums fell 21% in 2022. Payouts jumped as property and casualty insurers faced a huge bill after misjudging the prevalence 7.10 million BN. And by October 2022, the net worth ratio of seven companies had dropped below the 3% regulatory minimum. As the situation deteriorated, Taiwan's Financial Supervisory Commission stepped in. The reclassification of loss-making bonds as assets measured at amortized cost and relaxed rules around hedging, bond trades, and debt issuance. Their actions helped us make it through safely, said Lin Ting, Deputy Chief Executive Officer of Cathay Life Insurance, Connie Limited, Taiwan's largest life insurer by asset value, in an interview. As well as raising capital, Cathay is focusing on overhauling its product offerings. Lynn said, key changes include cutting the number of investment offerings with a guaranteed return rate and trying to reduce exposure to currency fluctuations. That means selling more of its insurance policies in U.S. dollars rather than local currency and focusing its Taiwan dollar products on more classic protection style policies, Lynn said with income still subdued and pressure to rethink their exposures. Less cash means the industry, which includes the likes of Fubon Life Company and Nansha Life Insurance. Company may not be the heavyweight investors they were. Issuance of Formosa bonds, foreign currency notes sold on the island in the first half were down about 70% from last year as the market, which once loaded the likes of Apolink, sinks into near irrelevance. Uh, one Wall Street banker who asked not to be named discussing internal trading flows uh, said participation from Taiwanese lifers is down materially in both primary and secondary markets uh, while other buyers have filled the void the lifers absence is still felt. Their day-to-day uh, -day activity may not dictate what spreads do in aggregate said Winnie Sissar, global head of credit strategy at Credit Sites. But 
at the margin, they're very important for absorbing incremental supply. And just be one of those extra buyers of corporate credit that keep things uh, relatively stable. Um, and uh, in, in Taiwan's domestic market, when the biggest buyers become sellers, back in up-end conditions, the lifers had to pay out yields of nearly 4% on their recent issues of subordinated bonds. Well in excess of the 2% paid by local banks. Uh, while the situation is stabilized, the pain isn't over. According to a report sent to legislators by Taiwan's FSC in May, there are still two life insurance companies whose financial ratios do not meet legal standards. Both plan to sell property assets to raise funds. In a worst case scenario, if a company fails to raise enough capital and falls below regulatory minimum ratios, the authorities could be forced to step in. Uh, three lifers are on negative credit outlook according to S&P's Taiwan ratings. Uh, two are small, but the other is Shinkan Life, one of Taiwan's top six life insurers. In the first half of 2023, Shinkan's after-tax losses jumped to the $11.2 billion. The company is also facing capital pressure as it only just cleared regulatory minimums in March. In the short term, Shinkan's first priority is to raise capital, said new chairman Wei Pao Shang at a product launch event last Thursday. Longer term, the company will focus on restructuring its product line, he added. And while classically higher rates should be good for life insurers in the long term, the sector's U.S. dollar exposure means higher hedging costs that will limit profits. Right now, hedging costs are at approximately 4% implied yield for 12 months roughly double last year. Uh, customers also being slow to return with consumers favoring bonds and term deposits. Even though premiums have recovered a little uh, in the first five months of 2023, the Slifer still paid out $44.3 billion more than we took in, according to data from the uh, Taiwan Insurance Institute. Um, uh, plus, there are long-term consequences from the decision to reclassify so many assets as amortized costs. If and when the U.S. starts to cut rates, lifers won't be able to profit as most assets in that category must be held to maturity, said Chang. And the capital build process is probably just starting. From 2026, the industry will adopt IFRS 17 global accountancy standards, bringing broad changes to financial reporting. For example, insurance profit will be separated from investment returns and liabilities valued at current interest rates rather than initial rates. And the Chang analyst to Taiwan ratings uh, said the changes will likely require more capital, though how much is unknown uh, until the regulator releases details of the local implementation. Uh, it is going to be a difficult and painful process to bridge the next accounting standards, said Cathay's Lin. Slower asset growth will be the new norm.